it it must be clear now that for most of you, I always hope for all of you, that uh, the pictures and thoughts that flood the being through the mind, that they are ephemeral. I have been sharing this, been talking about this for uh, such a long time now. And that it is assimilated inside now, what it means that all that appears in the mind, or through the mind, as thoughts and feelings, memories, desires, attachments, all these things, and all the names and forms that appear, they belong to the realm of the changeful. I did not create that. Nobody created that. It is the way it is. And anyone who sits and looks, inquires, contemplates it, will come to the same conclusion as has been given by the sages throughout time. Also, then what here is real? Then there is nothing wrong with perceiving, knowing, grasping that the world of names and forms is transient, and momentary. It's not even a point of view. It is a fact. But the more deeply you go into it the more you become aware of that dimension, where the perceiving of the world, of names and forms, where that perceiving takes place. Words always give a sense of more complexity. It is a very natural thing. But it has to be pointed out because it is easily overlooked in the human kingdom, because in our age it seems as though we we are more attracted easily to the the objects of the senses, through imagination and thought and primarily through personal identity. By saying this, this is not casting some heavy judgement or any dismissal upon the world. In fact, when we, con- when we are confirmed in that understanding, it releases many things inside. Actually, unexpectedly, also great joy arises in you. We have to taste very intense experiencing in order to shake us out of this false sense of security that is the terrain of the person. Each one must wake up to the fact that you are the consciousness itself. It should not be missed. To miss this, is to simply be dreaming in your life. And yet, seeing these things, you are not cynical about life or about the world. In fact, in seeing this true love, universal love, emanates from you. Because you don't really want anything from the world. Or do you? When I say want anything, of course, everything can be accessible. But when you have a sense of I need, I need, and form deep attachments to what is ephemeral by nature, this surely is foolish. Yet it's a very difficult thing to to separate from due to habit. Nevertheless. 
you were there in the first place, before all these things came. And our true nature remains innocent and untouched by the play of the body-mind. We need to come to that experiential conclusion. Grace is so much with you, step by step, breath by breath. Grace is with you. It has brought you so far. It will never abandon you. So many billions of beings have walked on this planet. They had moments just like we are sharing this very instant where we could look into each other's eyes and feel the living force, the life force and the consciousness. We were touched by each other's kindness or openness, inspired by life. There are moments for all beings. These billions of beings have dropped their bodies long ago. But their realization of the truth hmm, has not fallen. If we know ourselves only at the level of the body-mind, in other words, as a person, all this will go. All the dream goes on. Nothing is really lost but delusion. So I don't want to talk about these things and to try and you know, encourage, encourage. You have had so much support, encouragement. Now you must your tree must bear fruit. It is not enough that we understand things mentally, intellectually. By turning your attention inside the heart, you're waking up. Waking up from this long sleep of personhood. into that bright awareness itself. For this reason we came here. And if you have come here, and you have stayed, it is because grace has supported you. As I said before, you are the seeds of awakening in this dreaming world. Each one must be receiving the gift of the Spirit of Truth. The gift of the Spirit is not to speak in tongues, or to display miracles, or these things. The fruit of the Spirit is love, and peacefulness, and compassion. Empathy, openness, surrender. As souls, how long have we been journeying on the face of this planet? We don't know. But today matters. That you are in the hearing of these things matters. That you know who you are. What you are matters. To escape from the wheel of samsara matters. And yet, we still cling to seeds that will cause you to perish and to suffer. And these must be rooted out. Our true nature is imperishable, timeless. I don't even want to say eternal, because eternal is of time, unending time. But timeless is beyond time. And this is not a storybook. It's living guidance 
for living beings. So we are obliged to understand the functioning of the egoic mind. and to not support it. So you hold this feeling inside your heart, I am chosen for freedom. In this world, not everyone will understand you. For those who are asleep, they even perceive what kind of you are giving away your life. Because their projections may be different, their condition different. They measure success by worldly standards. But something brought you here, and you trust it because you've, you're living in the fruit of it. In fact, you are the fruit of it. Grow in that inner confidence. Trust in what has been revealed to you. Walk in the light of your own understanding. At the end of the day, your salvation does not depend upon anyone. Not on those who reject you, maybe. And yet, so many flowers are blossoming in this field of satsang. It is beautiful to see how much your presence is affecting those around you. The sense, the sense of personhood. must be completely transcended. It can stay even after one wakes up into the deeper state, but it will be only be so superficial, playful. All suffering received and given comes from personhood. When consciousness somehow locks itself into this this narrow expression called a person, and then darkness proliferates everywhere. But for most of you, have gone uh, beyond this. Be confirmed in that state of presence. Be conscious of the presence. It's a wider field. As you become more aware of the sense of uh, the state of presence, hmm, and then you begin to see fully how restrictive the sense of personhood has been. But we don't realize it until you're coming out of it. When you see it for what it is, you will not be inclined to go back there. In every state, every phase and stage in consciousness, every stage has its own attractions. But for whatever reason brought you to the place where you are, you are challenged to look from the truest place within yourself. Mm. This is seeing. This really is life affirming. When you are moving in the dynamic life, mm, as the sense of presence more, when you come to to that point where even 
the sense of presence is observable in you. Then you have transcended even the mode of presence. Presence itself becomes phenomenal. But be careful not to think you have done that in the state of presence. Life becomes light, without burden or without sorrow. Love fills and floods the being. Patience is there, openness, the falling away of fears. The deep understanding that whatever happens, it is fine at a deeper level. We stop judging life simply by what you like. You begin to wake up. Waking up into the immensity of being, one's perfect self. Why perfect? Because there is nothing you can do for it. You, as we presently conceive of ourselves, is the lesser component. Ordinarily, when we think of ourselves, it is only shaped out of the body mind mostly. But something is different here. Why do people they love to come to this place also? Mm. What is so special about this place? It's the same trees as over the beyond the hills. It's the same hills. Everything is the same. What is the difference? The difference is that here we venerate truth, we venerate God, and we live it. And that is the tree of life. Your life becomes the tree of life. Love becomes your climate. Not this fickle thing, but a love that is profound, that is without need or trickery, that which is open and genuinely caring. You are Manti Sahaja. And remember, Sahaja means the natural state. Not a contrived state, the natural state. And gradually, something is being absorbed in the unspeakable. There should be arising in the heart of everyone a natural yearning and a natural trust. To go as far as you can, as deep as you are capable. Even your attention turned in this way, the Supreme will do the rest. Life is always putting in front of us subtle clues. It has to do this, so that our part is to be sensitive enough to perceive them. And like this we grow, to discover the language of the Supreme. Isn't it wonderful to know that the most true thing in you is the God in you, that which gives light to the world, that the most true thing, 
is that which is imperishable, uncreated, unborn. Don't only believe this. Mm. Keep to your sadhana until it becomes totally irrefutable. When knowing and being are one, then your life has been used well. The things I share with you should bring great joy into your heart and peace.